Hello and welcome to the Dreaming and Doing podcast with me, Nikki Raby. I'm an actor, coach, writer, speaker, podcaster and a mum. And in my coaching work, I work with creatives, personal brands, freelancers and small businesses. In my podcast, I talk about success, but not in a traditional sense. I have conversations with those who have built a business from something they love or who have made a pivot in their career. Also those who have built a brand or a job that maybe didn't exist when they were at school and they found a way to monetize their skills, talents and expertise. I've spoken to loads of incredible people, coaches, designers, journalists, app creators, magazine editors, bloggers, content creators, authors, and all round movers and shakers. I asked the questions that you want to know the answer to. So how they started, about money, saying no, saying yes, pitching, presenting, putting yourself out there, even though it terrifies you standing out in a busy online world, growing, scaling, and making your work work for you and your circumstances. The show notes are always at nikkiraby.com forward slash podcast, and the conversation continues across social media, often on Instagram, my favorite platform, at Nikki Raby. Thanks so much for listening. It's great to have you with us. In today's episode, I'm talking to Alex Rugnicka, who is the founder of CEO Female Entrepreneur, a mentorship company that teaches women to connect with their inner badass CEO, rock their sales and run their businesses like a pro. Alex's pitch came to me at the perfect time. I was seeing such a theme that comes up again and again, and this comes with absolutely no judgment. My goodness, running your own business and pitching and putting yourself out there and being vulnerable and asking for sales can bring up all your stuff. But I really wanted to explore with Alex what happens if we can start to overcome those things, if we can actually start to work through them and have a toolkit of success. So you actually do get the stuff that you want to do done. And you're not just stuck in fear or self-doubt of thinking, how am I ever going to do this? So it's a really juicy one. Grab a piece of paper and a pen and and do come over to Instagram. Maybe put the episode in your stories by taking a screenshot and tag us both and let us know what you think. There were so many times where I was nodding along like, yes, 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 yes. Oh, totally. Yeah, absolutely. And It's a super interesting chat, so so enjoy and rate, review, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and I will see you very soon. Enjoy the episode. Alex, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for being with me. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, So, what what do you do? How would you describe yourself at this current time? I would say that my magic power is that I help um, female entrepreneurs to stop being the so-called nice girl and reconnect with their inner um, badass CEO so they can run their business like a pro Mm. um, and really go for it in, in life and business. So how did that start? How did you, oh, I've got so many questions. Oh my goodness. Like just ask one at once, Nikki. Um, <laughs> how, how did you come to realize that so many of us are trying to be a nice girl and fit into this beautiful little box that has probably been invented by a man? Hmm, the beautiful box that keeps you um, hostage, right? Mm. Yes, absolutely. So this was a very organic process for me. I actually never set up um, my business to work in this particular niche. Um, at that time, I was already a, a business coach, already working with clients on helping them biz- build a business. And we were dealing with the regular business stuff. So like the strategy, like how to write the emails, the content marketing, etc. And it was just a very organic process when I started to realize that, um, first of all, to kind of give you a little bit of a backstory, I used to struggle. I'm, I'm a t- totally a recovered nice girl myself. So it was something that <laughs> 
Yes, it was something that I struggled with for a really long time. I mean, like half of my life or more. Um, and it, and it um, kind of showed itself in a very damaging way, such as giving into fear, giving up too early, people pleasing, codependent behaviors, working 100 hour weeks just because I couldn't say no. Mm. Um, I'm, nodding. I'm nodding to all the things. <laughs> yes, exactly. It um, rings very thought- true. Yes. And at the time, I thought it was just me. So once I kind of had to overcome those things to build my own business, and then I kind of let go of those things, as I was working with my clients, I started seeing the same behaviors in them. So for example, I would give them, you know, a plan of action. Okay, so here are, you know, X, Y, Z things that I need to, you need to do in your business to grow it. And then they wouldn't do it. And I'm like, what's going on? And then the box would open up and everything would spill because I'm scared because what will people say say about me? I don't know, maybe this makes me a bad mom. And the more women I work with, the more I... And you know, when you, when you work with a variety of people and when once you work with a certain amount of people you have that special place of observation when you yes. can start seeing patterns. And I started seeing, oh my God, this is the real thing. Yeah. And so many brilliant, skilled, talented, beautiful women have this. And it's just somewhere in, like, it's just simmering beneath the surface. And no one really talks about it in, in, a, in a business coaching but this is the very thing that's stopping them from succeeding in business. In business, mm. so it was and those not just very, in very... that moment either. It's not like, oh, sorry, Alex, I didn't do the homework that I set you, and you go, oh, it's okay, we can just try better next time. It's what that knock-on effect has of I didn't do this, or I didn't feel like I could show up for myself, or I didn't put that boundary in place when I thought I should have done, and that has a knock-on effect. Of, there's all these stats, aren't there, of sort of by the time a man gets to a certain age, I think there was something like he the pay gap is so significant that he could buy a three bedroom uh, villa in Portugal or something like it has such an impact on so many areas of our lives mm, it absolutely does and once we, once I opened my eyes I was like oh my gosh this is bigger than I thought and um very very slowly I um it wasn't a straight line. So very slowly, I started just just say, okay, how do I infuse this into my marketing? How do I infuse this into, into my messaging? Mm. And I just started sh- making posts online, such as the nice girl is killing your business and here is why. And women started responding, like, this is resonating with me. Oh, my God, I can, I'm such a nice girl. Oh, my God, I can see myself in what you've just described. And when I had a bigger confirmation um, from from social posts and from from social interaction, I decided to make it um, a lead, let's just say, specialty of my, the unique twist of my business coaching, because it really is not just a strategy that stops people. Nine people out of 10, you know, they can have the right strategy if the head is not in the game, if the woman is scared to go fully in the game, She's not going to have the results that she wants to have. And that's not just in business. That's in life. That's in love. That's that's in the career life as well. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. What what prompted you to realize those patterns of behavior about yourself? When did you was there a sudden moment where you were like, oh, oh, that's what it is. And you had that realization or was it a gradual process? Looking back, I think it was it was definitely a gradual process. Um, I did a tremendous work on myself. I always, well, to start with, I'm a shy introvert. So I am the INTJ type of personality. Um, although some people I w- would argue that I am an F as well because I'm a very like emotional. I'm not sure if you know about the personality types. A little um, bit, yes. Yes. And, and, and I've always thought that, oh, maybe I'm just introverted. Maybe I'm just shy. But the problem was that inside, I knew that I wanted more and I couldn't make myself do more. I couldn't make myself go after my dreams. So it was this kind of internal battle of I want to speak up, but I wouldn't speak up. I want to make a change, but I wouldn't make a change. 
I want to progress, but I wouldn't take the action or I would make promises to myself thousands and thousands of time, but then I wouldn't take the action because I was scared or because I didn't believe in myself. Lack of confidence was a humongous thing for me. And it was already, and it kind of like simmered in me for years and years. And as I started going into management positions back in my career, um, I started going into um, management trainings and then I realized, okay, well, if you are a leader, you need to lead people, you need to be strong yourself. So I started working on myself through, 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 through those kind of um, training programs. But then fast forward to when I was already in business, bear in mind, I actually failed four businesses before I broke through and actually started making money, was able to quit my job and, and, and say, oh, it's a happy story now. And I failed at all four of those ventures purely to the fact that I never went in the game and I never really believed that it was possible for me. Thank you for being so honest because so often we just hear these stories of female entrepreneurs of going, I just did this and I just figured it out. But no doubt there have been experiments or ideas that didn't quite turn out the way they imagined or as I say a business that had to kind of close because it wasn't doing what it should have done as a business and I really appreciate your honesty because it's not just a straight line of I just woke up like this. Mm, Absolutely I, I think I think it's important that we tell those stories those untold stories because the you know, never ha- have we had so many people going into entrepreneurship mm. and they get seduced by the fancy marketing of those sweet stories. Yeah. And the what on shoes. Yes, absolutely. And what they don't know is the story behind the story that there was a story be- before you were this successful entrepreneur. There was a process of the so-called transition, yes. which isn't pretty. <laughs> the girl crying in the toilets or the... The yeah, the kind of the night, the Friday nights, drinking a bit too much wine and sort of sharing the same boring old story about how much you hate your life to your friends, and they're just looking at you going, "Oh my goodness, when is this ever going to end?" <laughs> Not the life, but like, are you going to sort yourself out and get out of victim mode? Mm, absolutely. So there was a there was a time. I actually remember there was a very distinctive moment. I was listening to a podcast, actually. Um, do you, you probably have heard of Louis House. So he, he's got like one of the, those yes. like self-improvement podcasts. And he was talking to someone about the uh, characteristics of champions. And I can remember it like it was yesterday. I was hanging out my washing. I was like picking something up. And These always me... happen, don't they? These moments in like the most unglamorous other moments <laughs> where you're like, I was wiping, I was picking up the peas off the kitchen floor that my son had thrown everywhere. And you're like, oh, God. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. So there I was with my headphones in, with my iPhone, listening to the podcast. And they were talking that it was kind of like a countdown of those characteristics. And then he so he's, he, he, said, he said various things and I was just listening to him and I was like, hmm, this is really good. And then he said number one. And he said one sentence that literally made me drop the laundry and just collapse in tears. And that sentence was, champions utilize self-belief to their advantage and I was done because I was like I just don't believe in myself I need to believe in myself Mm. this is the missing link how do I do that so that was uh, that was the moment I guess what did you what did you start to do what were the first steps or and did you even know what the first steps were? Um, no, I didn't. <laughs> it's not like there is a manual, right? Um, but what, I mean, being a foreigner, being a foreigner, a skill that I have very, very highly developed is a skill of observation and being resourceful and looking for answers. I was never a person to say, um, well, I don't know. So if I don't know something, I will go and research. So I literally just like started asking questions. What, how does one become confident? How does one believe in themselves? And that was the moment when I, when I went really, really heavy on mindset work and I decided that it is a skill 
And if all the people were not confident and then they became confident, then I can do that also. And I literally made a very, very conscious decision to start playing in my own team. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. Yes. You know, the way the way that sometimes describe it to my clients is that when you when you are not confident, when you don't believe in yourself, it's just imagine that you are a runner and you like on that starting track and there's like someone on your on your left, someone on your on your right, and everyone's like stretching and preparing to do the race and they're like setting themselves up to win. And um, then what do you do? You kneel over, you kneel down, you look at your shoelaces and you tie them together. So then when the gun goes off, everyone starts running, what do you do? You like fall flat on your face. Mm. This is what you do to yourself when you allow those self-defeating thoughts to run in your head. That's, that's, I think that's a great metaphor to really explain the damaging effect of not playing on your own team in terms of self-belief and self-confidence. You're so right. And I feel that those, unless you are aware of that and unless you work at it daily, hourly, minute by minute, whenever you need to, unless you actually make that a priority, it will just run away with itself. And I think certainly as well going back to that nice girl stuff our brains have enough evidence to back up like no you're just fine the same the way that you are or the way that maybe we were brought up it's that sense of don't get above your station or um, don't do anything different so our brain has all of those uh, things ingrained in us so we you've got to work really hard to break them because some of those beliefs are uh, more years than I'd care to remember. Mm, absolutely, I, I'm not. I'm not going to lie. It is work, and it definitely is a process. And um, people ask me, okay, well, how long do I do that? How long is it going to take? And the answer is, I don't know, because everyone's mm. different. And as you say, some people have it more wired in them. Some people have it less wired in them, and so. For me, it was it was really a lot of work, and it was absolutely the way you've described it. It was making a decision to be compassionate and to listen to those thoughts and to literally polish my own mind as much as I could yeah. um, and say, no, I'm going to say this instead of that. No, I'm actually going to feel this instead of this. Um, and it happens until... What there, there is something which I call the point of saturation, and the point of saturation is when you've done when you've done so much repetition within the certain area or of, of like a of a skill, right? That it becomes a, the majority of your mindset, and it's it's not possible to control every single thought that comes into your head, but as long as you keep majority of yourself feeling that you love yourself that you believe in yourself that it's possible for you then it's so much easier to let go and dissolve those negative thoughts when they do come in because they still will continue to come in yes but you have by now rewired your brain made your i believe in myself connections in your brain stronger and the connections of hey who are you to do this much weaker so when they try to speak up, you can literally just like push them away and say, ah, oh, do you know what? Mm. You don't even deserve any airtime in my head. Go away. And how do you do that on the days where you might feel extra tired or hormonal or you get a real blow that you're not expecting? And it, re you know, we're human beings as well at the end of it, that it really knocks you for six how do you fight back even harder? Are there any things that really help you practically or phrases or mantras or anything like that that sort of kick your mindset back into shape? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So a number one thing to answer your question now, when you're tired, and this is me saying to everyone out there and to every man, actually, to everyone, when you're tired, don't listen to yourself. <laughs> Yeah. Honestly, don't listen to yourself. Just say, you know what? You're tired. Your mind is tired. Go to sleep. And then take care of yourself. I mean, literally just ignore yourself. Yes. Just ignore yourself. And that's the best advice I can do. 
in terms of a bigger setbacks or, or, or bigger obstacles or maybe maybe you you had some sort of rejection um then you know yes we are human beings and you need to do this with compassion there is a big difference between being um feeling like invincible and nothing can touch me and i am the best in the world and and being truly confident yes. confidence is right but there's a big difference between between those those two things and confidence is not about arrogance and it's not about feeling it at all times it's about filtering what serves you and filtering the noise which means that you know if you are trying especially in a, in any sort of creative field when you're trying to make a, a name for yourself or when you're trying to build a brand um in the beginning when no one knows who you are and what you're about you will be ignored and you will be rejected a lot of times you pro- you as an actress i mean you know this more than anyone else <laughs> right um, oh yes yeah Absolutely. that muscle is strong mm. so it's very important that we don't take those things personally um and that we truly trust that it's possible for us sometimes that's, that's enough yeah and just to be able to stand in that knowing of who you are is good enough because i think sometimes in my early acting career i had this sense of I'll be whatever you want me to be. And sometimes you can take that too far because you're trying to, I don't know, cut your hair in a certain way to follow the trend or like have a new accent or whatever it might be. And sometimes what you need to do is just really hone what it is that your USP is. And when the time is right, then your time will come. Absolutely. And what's even more damaging with trying to I be whatever you want me to be is yeah. that it's unattractive and it doesn't work. Yes. <laughs> because on the energy level, people can feel it. People can feel that you're looking for permission, that you're looking to be liked, that you're looking to be accepted. And it works with having sales conversations as well. When you're trying to sign up clients and you're like desperate, like, please like me, please like me, right? Yes. Uh, then I'll you can you a discount. More effectively. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Maybe not. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's, it's. I think it's about. It's. I think it's about energy and about knowing absolutely that there is a level of emotional um, growing up that we need to do. Um, and once we reach that level of okay, I'm now I'm going to own who I am. So just to give you an example, I used to have a really big fear that people wouldn't buy from me because I have a weird accent and and because I have a weird surname. I literally thought that people wouldn't trust me for some reason. Um, And people don't care. (laughs) But it was my story that I was running in my head. Yeah, that your your brain automatically wants to keep you safe. So it's just a bit like, don't worry, I'll find some other excuses and we can just stay small together. You don't have to break out of your comfort zone at all. Mm, absolutely I mean those things are very insidious and your subconscious mind will use any trick in the hat so it will try to attack you by saying who are you to do this you're not good enough etc but if it doesn't work um it may even make you sick like your body may, may have a physical reaction to something as in like oh my gosh I like I'm having a really bad headache. I can't go to this audition or something. And I'm not saying it's always like this. Um, but if we are fighting to break through a really, really strong limiting belief, then that old, old identity, what I call it, um, will fight very strongly to stay alive. And I think having awareness of what's going on is the first step to say, actually, no, hold on a second. I'm going to go and do this regardless of how I'm feeling right now because it's important and because I decided to do that. Yes. I was just thinking about that tired thing that when my son is tired and even like something like going in the bath is such a big deal, like I don't want to go in the bath, I'm too tired. And now he is getting a bit more self-awareness where he'll say, sorry about my behavior, mummy. I was just a bit, bit tired. Like he's recognizing those patterns for himself. But generally, through those periods, all is forgiven because I know he's not thinking rationally. And that's just really struck a chord with me where don't don't make decisions in the middle of the night when you're tired and emotional and completely wired. 
Mm, that is music to my ears, absolutely. And um, it only it only came to me with 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 age, really. <laughs> and oh, the more no, I started, the imagine mind. if we knew all these things when we were younger? I would have like had a multi international business <laughs> at about seven or something. But I think, um, well, I hope you know. I mean, I'm certainly going to do the work with my children, but that sense of this is such an important piece of the puzzle of figuring out how we can round ourselves out as human beings and understand our own patterns of behavior and success that sometimes the school system I think is a bit flawed because it's just encouraging us to do more put more hours in more homework and if your head's not in the game it's just not going to work Mm. oh don't even even get me started on the school system because (laughs) uh, I'm a mother myself right my daughter is nine um, I didn't like school, uh, maybe because I was shy, etc. So I didn't particularly enjoy it. Um, but in my opinion, schools really, and I don't want to be like overly judgmental, but in a, in a times where you have to brand yourself for who you are and sell your services is really strong. And it's a completely different skill set to being an employee. Mm. So and I think this is what we see more and more and more why women, why women, not only women, any kind of people who are switching from being an employee to being an entrepreneur are struggling so much because the school system is teaching you very much the nice girl behavior, fit in, do your grades, memorize the things like it doesn't teach you to analyze, to analyzing and coming up, being resourceful and dealing with issues when they come up like what do you do when there is no solution what do you do when there's a wall in front of you it teaches you to hit your scorecards and if you have the grades that you are supposed to have then you are a good student right the same thing happens in companies right you know do your kpis come to meetings, do this, do that. And, you know, don't go on your break when you want to. And don't get me wrong, we need all of those things to keep companies running. I'm not saying that they're, that they're bad at all, but it's a different the different skill set and different mindset to being an entrepreneur when you're like, hey, there really aren't any rules. You can make your own rules. You can be creative and you can really make it to your liking. Totally. And I think that thing about being an entrepreneur is the more you do it the more problems you face inevitably because you um you start to up level you're looking at different I mean we touched about uh, on it before we started recording like you start using new technology you start learning these new things you might start to manage staff and really go to the next level in that way but one thing I've learned to really harness is that power of, I might not have met this exact problem before, but I've met something similar and I figured it out. So I can do that again, rather than like, mom, it's not working. What am I going to do? And, you know, feeling like everything is being completely crushed. Well, that's not even that's not even the worst the, the 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 worst reaction. I used to be I used to be worse than that. I used to. Um, it's, I'm laughing because it's because it's funny. It's 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 funny how things in uh, retrospective seem funny, but they're not so funny when we go through them, right? So in the beginning, um, and I was completely self-taught because I was so broke that I couldn't invest in anything. So I was teaching myself how to build WordPress websites. I was doing everything. Um, everything myself and in the beginning I used to take like technical issues so personally that if I didn't know that how to resolve something online or kind of like I didn't know how to tweak something that would mean that I was a bad person and it would never work for me Mm. whereas now I'm like okay well it's just a tech issue just go and find the answer The, 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 the good thing about tech is that it's dead like it's not mean it's not out there to try to get you and make you feel bad it doesn't have that kind of ability it really doesn't care about you that's the thing it's not an emotional thing it's a bit like yeah sure we're in the same room but whatever exactly exactly so but we we, we really need to focus on our thinking and be, be solution focused as in like okay someone has the answer all i need to do is find the answer find the solution Um, and I think it's just, it's just such a beautiful journey, regardless on what field that you're in, 
um, that it really teaches you to trust yourself mm. and you just keep building that resilience of like, okay, I've dealt with this, I've dealt with that. Oh my God, this one, I thought I would never get over this one, yet I did. Um, and that's where that confidence also comes from as well. No one can take your skills away from you. Someone, yes. I don't know, there could be a huge crash. What would happen if someone took away your business from you tomorrow? You would just rebuild it. Why? Because you have the skills. Exactly. And that's where that deeper, really, really like unshakable confidence comes from. Because you know you have it in you to do it again and again and again and again. Yeah. And the more you do this, to the more the more you can use it in different areas of your life as well because you start understanding the process of how it goes. Totally. And it, it has a knock-on effect that you're trying to, not that I have this kind of relationship necessarily, but like if there's something that me and my partner need to work through, it's not that kind of Jeremy Kyle screaming and shouting and like, you did this and I don't like this and all the rest of it. It's learning those kind of like, okay, what's the bottom line here? What's the solution that we're trying to get to? How can we get there in the quickest way? And that's not to say that if he's speaking, I'm like, come on, come on, like, get on with it. But it's, it's using it to in a positive way and not just sort of staying in that zone. And I, I think it's really interesting that sense of growing your business in a way that feels really good to you and in a way that just suits your personality and feels good and um, that you're really enjoying the journey as well. And the amount of times that I see my clients sort of share what we or they have been working on behind the scenes, um, share it on Instagram. And always the first thing that I do is I message them saying, have you celebrated this? It's live. Mm. It's amazing. This is brilliant. And mm. they're like, oh, no, 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 I haven't yet. I've just been too busy. And, you know, I have to have a stern word with them going, you need to celebrate this because this will be another anchor for you of going, oh, my goodness, I actually bloody did it. Absolutely. And I think it's just such a beautiful journey that in the beginning, um, I think in the beginning, it's okay that we all try to build our businesses and model after someone. And that's totally okay. That's why maybe our messaging isn't working in the beginning, because we're not, we're not we really are we, we're not really speaking our truth. Right. Once we let go of those kind of like, nice girl behavior, so mm -hmm. to speak, then we can find our unique voice. And you probably will see that from your friends as well. Those of them who really unapologetically create their businesses from their heart, from their desire, they really stand out. So it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's when you really unleash that creative force from yourself without the fear of how you're going to be perceived, what will people say about you, that gives you that power. And then you just have a huge payback from that. Totally. But that like not to underestimate how much work that takes and dedication for lots of people I mean I grew up in a very small village well quite a big village but a small community and everybody knew what everybody was doing and you were you weren't necessarily built up to win like wow that's great that she's doing that isn't that inspiring it was a bit like what are you doing that for or is that you sort of pull down it was like that thing that people talk about when you get a bucket of crabs if one tries to break free the others will kind of pull it back down like no 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 no. you stay here with us mm. Mm. I'm just you, you can't see me but I'm just like literally like <laughs> nodding my head and really 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 taking this in because I think it's just such a tragedy when people um give in to the mentality of of the masses and people around you yeah. So just to give you an idea, um, you know, for my entire life, I never thought of my, and I think I told you about this before we had the interview, I never was the so-called entrepreneurial material. I've never had a lemonade stand. I've never was thinking about how to make money. I never had loads of ideas. I was just a very shy person um without any like big chances i didn't know anyone who was up to big things i didn't know anyone who had a business um and it's so i mean so passionate about telling people to listen to that quiet voice inside you that tells you hey there is more for you because it's that voice that when we follow it it it's never wrong 
mm-hmm. but it's the fear that stops us from 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 going so you know um my question to you is you know what made you like where you where you just naturally like okay I'm gonna go and have those big things happen and I want to be an actress and I want to have a business like I'm sure that you had your moments when you were thinking, well, who am I to do this? That's why it's so important that we share the stories and people know, hey, I'm just a regular person like you, yet I can have an extraordinary life. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm sure I wasn't as popular as I could have been or I didn't get the boy, the popular boys. Um, well, not at school, but they came later down the line. But, <laughs> um, that's another story. Uh, but, but do you know what I think on that? I think I was thinking about this the other day that at school, I wasn't necessarily like one of the cool kids. I was just like, oh, whatever, because the cool kids in my school were all about messing around and like just causing havoc, really. It was quite a Um, It wasn't a terrible school, but it was quite um, fraught. There was always something going on, like, oh, there's been a fight or there's been a whatever. Like, it wasn't, it was quite raucous. Um, But when I remember going to sixth form college and at 16 and kind of reinventing myself and thinking, like, yeah, I'm just going to, like, own the fact that I'm really cool and like even though I wasn't necessarily whatever that means but I kind of owned it and do you know what like things started to happen because I had that belief in myself of I had a it wasn't like I was walking around with you know holding up a couple of fingers going yeah whatever I'm great don't come near me but I just had that sudden belief in myself and it had a really positive effect on lots of areas of my life and I think sometimes we don't necessarily have to go and have that big retreat or that life transformation. Sometimes we can just decide going, I'm not going to put up with that rubbish anymore. I'm no longer available for that. And, you know, that's when we can make big progress quite quickly. I love your story. I love your story. I really would like to see you back then, maybe <laughs> going with the fingers, right? That would be a good picture to see. Yeah, um, totally. Totally. Yeah. And because I just, but I mean, but then of course, like that had a detrimental effect with my parents because they were a bit like, oh my mm. goodness, where's our the sweet child gone who was very kind of conformist and uh, predictable? And I be, just became a bit of a, fireball but equally like it was two years of my life that I think when I left home at 18 my mum was like yeah I'm I'm ready for this moment now but you know maybe it was down to teenage angst or or whatever but it, it did give me those skills of like you can reinvent yourself as and when you want and you don't necessarily have to wait for somebody else's permission Mm. nice well I didn't have that moment until I was like 28 (laughs) but it came it came when it needed to come I was like stuck in my oh who am I to do this so I I love your story and you know when you when you said that you know um it was about that coolness like you were you were cool because you thought you were cool it doesn't mean that you're really cool but people respond to your coolness when you believe that you're cool whatever that is and I think that's the beauty of um, of the energy that when we trust ourselves, when we love ourselves, and when we honor ourselves for what we want, all the people respond to us better because it's attractive. Yes. And it not in not not just in a sexual way. I'm 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 talking about any sort of environment, whether that's in in meetings, in in your negotiations in at your company, or whether you go into auditions and trying to be picked, or whether you are on a sales conversation. Just energy wise, when you're on your side, other people feel it, and it's one of those things that um, people just resonate with um, on the, on the energy level. Absolutely. And certainly when I had my son, when I'd go to auditions, you know, I was fitting them in between nap times and feeding or like my mum would have him for an hour so I could pop into Soho and like do this meeting and then get back. And I think that energy of like, are you running on time? Is like how what's happening here rather than like, 
I'm just here all day waiting for my dream. Hopefully you will pick me in that kind of nice girl way that used to happen. Bizarrely, I just got a lot more jobs, even though I was a mum now and I was a bit bigger than I had been before. And I'm sure I was still breastfeeding at the time and all of these things. But I think sometimes, yeah, if you can manage your energy in that way, it does brilliant things. Um, What works really well for you in terms of managing your own energy? Because I guess when we're working with clients, you have to hold that space and that time and energy for them. What what works for you? Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to answer it by um, describing my tattoo, actually, that I have on my right hand. And by the way, I am not a tattoo person at all. <laughs> if someone ever told me that I would have a tattoo, I'd be like, are you crazy? Tattoos are for, like, dangerous people. And it's changed now. <laughs> now they're cool. Um, but I'm going to talk to you very, very quickly through, 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 through my tattoo. And it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. Okay. Um, and the first one starts with D, which is a desire, right? So for me, the most important thing is that I listen to my desire, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. The next thing is that I imagine, which means that if there is a desire in my head, I then start dwelling on it. I give it attention. I imagine things. I, I visualize it. Next thing, believe. Right, that was a step that I was failing at for a really, really long time. Again, that self, you know, that kind of low confidence piece. So I make a decision. I'm going to believe that it's possible for me and that it is mine to claim. Next, focus, which means that I focus on what you want. So many people, and you probably will know this so 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 well as a coach. So many times you ask people what they want Mm. and they answer the question in terms of its opposite which what I mean by that is that they tell you about the goal that they have in a way of all of the reasons why it's not going to work for them yeah. right so it's you never give them- celebrated is it it's kind of like well I I would like this because I sort of don't want this this and this absolutely so so they focus so they want something but they focus on what they don't want and then they create that reality so that F is for focus. Next to this is action. A for action. Again, I used to be a massive procrastinator, never used to take action, which is a, a, one of the biggest acts of self-betrayal that there is, not to go after what you want. So I take action for things that I believe in that I want to create. The next letter is P, which is for persistence. Again, I used to give up so easily. Now, when I lock my desire on something, like, I'm going to get it. (laughs) Sooner or later, I'm going to get it. And the last letter is R for receive. So for me, that's my map in life. That's all I need to do. That's all I need to do to be centered. That's all I need to know that um, I'm going in the right direction. And if whenever I feel in life that I'm lost, all I need to do is look at those letters and see, okay, what am I not doing? Maybe I haven't listened to my desire recently. Maybe I've been distracted. Maybe I haven't been focusing on what I want. Maybe I haven't been taking action or maybe um, I haven't been persisting, persisting enough. So on a bigger scale, this is, this is kind of like my roadmap in life. On a smaller scale, I definitely have a mindset routine that I do every single day. And um, it just helps me to stay focused and centered into whom I intentionally and deliberately choose to be every single day. I absolutely love that. And, you know, most people can sometimes go, I'm a positive person, so I don't need to work this. Or like sometimes people will say, I'm a naturally slim person. I'm not, by the way. But like when people say, I'm a naturally slim person, so I don't need to take care of my health because I'm not fat. It's you still need to do the inner workings of of these sorts of things. And I love that you have that as a focus um I heard a a coach called Emily Williams I don't know if you know her or people Mm -hmm. listening who do um she's really interesting and she's she said some great nuggets over the years and um one thing that she says about desire is if you have the desire on some level it's meant for you because otherwise why would it have been placed in your body and your mind and it really struck with me because there was some sort of comfort in that. Like, oh, I'm not just crazy for thinking like, oh, I want that. Wouldn't it be cool if 
it's like, no, if it keeps coming up again and again, maybe it is meant for me. And then once you start to lean into that, you're like, and I'm doing it and this is happening and this is possible. And that's when it gets really exciting. You must follow your desire. The, the way I describe it is I always say that desire justify itself, mm. which means that the very fact that you have a desire for something, which that means that you are capable of achieving it, yes. right? And I think that there is a great price for women especially who don't follow their desires, those depressed women, those women who, do, who lack light in their eyes, who lack that sparkle, who lack that radiance, um there is a great price for when you don't honor what you want in life Mm. yeah and I see it in myself sometimes you can look at photos of yourself and other people might have gone oh yeah Nikki was on great form that night or she made me laugh or we had a couple of glasses of wine probably more than a couple but you know we had a great time that evening but I know sometimes I can see it in myself like "Mm, it's not it's not all piecing together as it should there and um yeah you've got to keep working it um but if people want to come and find out more about you, um, where should they go? And um, yeah, where's the best place to kind of hang out and get to know you more? Sure. So uh, my name is Alex Rudnika, and I'm sure you can find my surname like in the show notes. <laughs> so just find me online. I'm on social media. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, on LinkedIn, etc. In terms of my website, just come over to um, CEOfemaleEntrepreneur.com. And um, you can um, have lots of interesting things to interact um, there with. Perfect. And I've got one final question, which is where would you like to be in five years time? Oh, I will be doing, I will be running CEO Female Entrepreneur still. I'm on a much more global scale. I have no doubt whatsoever about it. So um, by then we will have a fancy office and I'm not such a big team, just enough of people who believe in my mission. Um, and I will be doing my thing in the world. Yeah. And what will you be doing personally? What are your personal goals? Personally, um, this is an interesting question because um, I'm one of those people who understands and who gave herself permission to to actually be like, you know what? And this is like, I always struggle when people ask me, what's your hobby? And I'm like, <laughs> um, what well, business? I know my work. Is that okay? <laughs> um, yeah, so... In my personal life, I definitely want to be in a happy relationship. I am currently single, so yes, I'm definitely available for a a special king to come into my life. (laughs) Available for all the things. Yes, um, and definitely enjoying enjoying, um, my daughter being a teenager and us having wonderful conversations about life traveling um, and just enjoying life just just living to the absolute fullest and uh, meeting wonderful people to me like there is there isn't many things that can compare to a wonderful nourishing juicy conversation with interesting people over a great meal Mm. like uh, it's just one of those moments when you walk away and you're just like oh my god my soul is just so juiced up so um I have, I have very simple very day. simple desires <laughs> absolutely and somebody said that to me the other day like what do you do to relax and I I said that very thing like I love a great chat you know sitting having some good food or people drinking cups of tea on my sofa like I just love that feeling when you don't have to clock watch and you don't have to worry about going anywhere you can just kind of go with the flow Absolutely. Enjoy some enjoy some good steak as well. I'm not sure if you're a meat eater, but I um I am. <laughs> I'm basically eating all the things with this second pregnancy. This child <laughs> is like, what are we eating? What are we doing? Like, you haven't fed me for about forty minutes. I'm really hungry. <laughs> quick, quick. And uh yeah, I'm I'm eating all the things which which oh, is good. So um, look after yourself. I oh I will, absolutely. And sometimes you just have to go to bed. I think this is a thing you know, in terms of part of this self-care and protecting yourself and taking yourself to the next level is sometimes you have to just keep doing the basic things as well as the big bold, like, yes, I can do this and the new mindset stuff. Sometimes those basic things have to be in place as well. Gargantuan, gargantuan. I'm not sure if it's the word, but my daughter uses it. And the way I describe it is that gargantuan, gargantuan results happen when you do the tiny steps. So yes. I absolutely agree. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Alex, I love this conversation. Thank you so much. And, Thank you um, so much. 
yeah, maybe we'll have some steaks sometime soon. That sounds great. <laughs> Sorry for the vegans and the vegetarians who are listening or other foods are available. But um, yeah, I've loved the chat. Thank you so much for being so candid and just such a brilliant guest. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and I would love to hear what you thought of the episode and share any takeaways with me. Come and find me across social media at Nikki Raby or you can visit the podcast page nikkiraby.com forward slash podcast.